Welcome to our second video on engineering for the AQA syllabus. Now in this video, we are going to look more at the mechanical aspects, the mechanical systems that you need to remember for your exam coming up in May, June time. So as we go for, forward through these, there will be some questions, but I'll also be recapping on some of the techniques that you've learned. So in this part of the video, we're going to talk and recap over some of the things that you need to be aware of. So one of the first things that we will need to discuss are linkages. Now, you will have remembered three of these linkages from the content that you've learned so far. We have reverse, parallel, and bell crank. Now, a linkage is used to change the size of a force or the direction of motion or even the type of motion they're constructed by joining links and rods and levers and they're connected via pivots to allow or restrict their movement now you have three that you need to be aware of here uh, one of them is the reverse motion and this is for example if you put in the direction to the right as your input it's going to bring your output to the left and vice versa so the idea is that it is changing the direction with a parallel motion this type of linkage has two pivots the others are moving pivots okay so you've got the input and the output movement going in the same direction the input force and the output force are exactly the same so they're connected and parallel to each other the final one we have is the bell crank this linkage has one fixed pivot and two moving pivots the output is at a 90 degree angle, so make sure you remember that. In other words, it changes a horizontal movement to a vertical movement or vice versa, which you can see in this diagram. So the horizontal movement is actually causing a downward motion, if you like. The other thing that you need to be aware of is that there are different types of motion. So you can see here in the diagram, I've got linear, I've got reciprocating, oscillating, or rotary. So there are different types of motion that you will need to be aware of in your exam. Now, one of the things that uh, you will need to also come across, and I will explain these better in answers to questions, are the chain and sprocket, cams, followers, pulleys, and bearings. So as I go through some of these answers, it may recap on what you've learned so far on these questions. So as of my previous video, I am going to talk about some mechanical system questions here to get you thinking about how to answer some of these questions if they came up in your exam. So the first question is, the real wheel of a motorbike can be driven by a chain and a sprocket or a pulley and belt. Give two advantages and disadvantages of using a chain and sprocket rather than a pulley and belt. The other question we have here is explain the function of cams in a car engine. So at this point, I would like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then resume the video so that you can have a look at how you're doing. So here are our answers to this question. So the rear wheel of a motorbike can be driven by a chain and sprocket or pulley and belt. Give two advantages and disadvantages of using a chain and sprocket rather than pulley and belt. Well, the chain and sprocket has an advantage over using complex gear trains because only two sprocket wheels and a chain are needed. This is going to save you cost. So by only having to use the sprocket and chain, you're going to save money from other components. The problem with the chain is that sometimes it can jump out of place and break if it's not maintained correctly. So you do have an element and need to have an understanding of maintenance here. Chains and sprockets can also handle higher loads and stress. They're also suitable for high performance and heavy duty, such as using a motorbike. The other drawback is they can ca cause higher noise and vibration during their operation. So it's just something to be aware of. Now it says, explain the function of cams in a car engine. Well, in a car engine, 
they have cams and followers that turn in a rotary motion. So in other words, that rotary motion changes into a reciprocating up and down motion, which you can see us in this diagram here. So as the follower moves around and rotates, then what you're going to have is, and that's usually done with a motor and a timing belt, I should say, but that follower will move up and down over that cam, which pushes the valve open so that you can allow the right air and fuel mixture to enter the combustion chamber. So with the cam rotating, the follower will go up and down and will allow the right air fuel mixture in the combustion chamber. So these next two questions are slightly simpler um, and slightly shorter answers, but they say state the function of a reverse motor linkage and state the main purpose of a cam and a follower mechanism. Pause the video at this point, try your question, and then resume to see how you could answer it. So here are the answers to these two questions. It says state the function of a reverse motion linkage. The main use of a reverse motion linkage is so that the direction of the input motion is reversed. In this example here, you can see as the input goes forward to the right, the output is going to the left. And you can see where the pivots occur in that diagram. For example, if you were moving the input to the left to the right, then the output would be moving to the left. State the main purpose of a cam and a follower. The purpose of a cam is to convert rotational motion into linear motion. So in our spec, you really need to acknowledge that the rotation will change to up and down. It's the whole idea of the conversion. And if you can name the different types of cams that are available, it will be helpful to you. For example, um, some specs have uh, said in the past that it is an egg-shaped cam, but we have round cams pear-shaped cams, ellipse, eccentric, hexagon, snail, all different types of cams that can have a difference of impact on the use of the follower. Our last set of questions say, describe the two main functions of a pulley system. A mechanical system has an input force of 35N and an output force of 140N. Calculate the mechanical advantage of the system. So again, at this point, I would like you to pause your video and see how you get on with these questions. So. Here are the answers to two of these questions. So the pulley system is used to reduce the effort when lifting heavier loads. You may have seen these used on cranes, for example, or there's a diagram here of a gent trying to pull, use a pulley to actually lift something that's uh, very hard to lift. So they transfer the power within the system and they use a rotary motion to do this. As you can see, there's a rope that's gone through this pulley here where the gent is pulling. Um, they usually are used in construction and manufacturing and other industries where the load is crucial. Now to work out the mechanical systems input and output and the mechanical advantage here, what we have used is we have used the output force divided by the input force to give us an advantage of 4.0. Sometimes people have uh, used the acronym MOI, so the mechanical advantage, the output, and the input as a way of reminding them how to do that. So that might be useful to you. Lots of people have other ways of remembering things. So hopefully this video was useful for giving you a quick recap of some of the items in mechanical systems and thank you for watching.